Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. <sighs> this week is a big week, I guess. Um, on Monday, we celebrated Canada Day and on Thursday, we celebrate Independence Day. And as a dual citizen of both Canada and the United States, it uh, is nice to have a chance to celebrate the two nations um, that have given me a home. So happy Canada Day to all of my friends and family in Canada. I know it's a few days, a couple of days late, <laughs> but I always feel like events like this are some um, that we should celebrate for as long as possible. So happy Canada Day and happy Independence Day to all of my American friends and family. This week I'm still on a bit of a vacation high and I'm feeling inspired and motivated to do some neurographic art. And I want to use blues because I want to create an abstract using neurographic art and I want it to be an abstract representing water. <laughs> You may be wondering why I want to paint water in particular um, because I mean it's clear it's beautiful when you see it in the landscape but I mean if you just look at it in a glass it looks pretty plain but it does so much and it uh, I don't know water is near and dear to me I am a self-professed mermaid at heart and I grew up, you know, as a fisherman's daughter on the coast of New Brunswick and I spent a lot of time at the beach swimming and just enjoying all the glories of water. And I think even though it's a very simple element, it is also very powerful, it's very beautiful in the way that it moves, it's very flexible and it has in many ways a lot of um, wisdom I guess for for lack of a better way to explain it or maybe that is the, the exact way to explain it um, I see water as a wise element it is flexible it moves it flows it adapts um, and I'm always reminded of one of my favorite Bruce Lee quotes who said be water my friend for exactly those reasons, because water is flexible, because water is adaptable, because water flows and it just is. It is probably the essence of what it is to be fully mindful and in the present moment. I guess I can't say it better than that. So I want to, I guess, create a little painting as an ode to water and I'm using neurographic art to do it. And uh, the blues that I'm working with are some of my favorite blues. And I hope you'll join me in creating uh, this little painting or any little painting that you feel like uh, creating. I always enjoy knowing that you're painting along with me. And even if you don't feel like painting right this instance, I hope that this painting will inspire you to get creating because it can be so good for us to to make time to do the things we love so let's get going with this week's process and uh thank you so much for being here I cut my paper to 8 by 8 inches and I taped it to a piece of MDF board. I love doing this because I love to have a bit of a border around my paintings and I also like to have a rigid surface for my paper to rest on so that it doesn't buckle quite as much. Taping helps prevent it from doing so. And by having it on a movable surface I can also move the painting around as I need to while I'm painting. I just started my process by adding a bit of Titan Buff to the paper. I want to have a neutral background that I can add my blues to in 
subsequent layers. And you'll probably notice that I switched brushes. I had started with a smaller round brush and this, even though it's not a huge piece of paper, it's still relatively big. And this square um, flat brush is actually helping me cover the surface of the paper a lot better. It's typically a good um, piece of advice, I guess, to keep in mind is that the bigger the substrate you're working on, the bigger the tools you'll need. Um, if you work with smaller brushes on a piece of paper this size, it might be hard for you to cover the whole area before the paper starts to dry, and that may create some effects that you may not want. <laughs> So while the paint was still wet, I decided to start adding some of my neurographic lines and I'm doing this with my brush. I'm mostly going to work for this painting with watercolors and at the very end I will add some gesso, but I don't think I'll work with anything else. I really want to keep it, um, like I said, as an ode to water and so I don't think there's a better way for me to do that than to actually work with the element that I'm paying homage to. <laughs> uh, so I'm adding a bit of salt to what I've just created. I know it's going to move things and create some interesting effects and I think this will make for a really nice background for my painting. I let my background dry completely and remove the salt and now I'm coming in and I'm adding more neurographic lines and this time the lines that I'm adding are the lines that I'm going to be working with for the rest of the painting. If you're not very familiar with the process of neurographic art, I have a few videos that I'll list in my video description that can help you understand it a little bit better. It's a very simple process that's uh, very mindful and I find also very therapeutic. It's, it's so relaxing to create in this way because it's very, very easy. It takes a lot of thinking out of the process and uh, it's just very enjoyable. I love it. So I've done quite a bit of paintings and quite a few videos on neurographic art, but I do have my very own way of using neurographic art. Um, elements and so I don't tend to stick to all the quote-unquote rules of neurographic art. I don't find rules to be particularly helpful in the creative process unless it's rule number six. <laughs> if you watched some of my previous videos you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, rules for me are just hindering. I want to be as free as possible when I'm creating and so I, I do my best not to adhere to any rules or any strict ways of having to create.
I'm really loving the flow of the lines I've created over my initial background and at the same time it feels like everything is still very much in the same value scheme and I want to change that by adding some dark value contrast. That will help to make my lines stand out a lot more and it will definitely give the painting more dimension. I'm really loving the idea of using neurographic art to represent water because in many ways when we're painting and creating neurographic art we're applying some of the same principles of flexibility and um, adaptability that water has and that is I guess expressed for me in how we round off all of the lines that intersect and have very sharp meeting points. By rounding those meeting points, we are creating a what looks like a more flowing and flexible image. And to me, that is very representative of water, especially when it's in its liquid state. The beauty of water, of course, is that it allows itself to be anything any situation requires it to be. It boils and evaporates when it's exposed to heat. It freezes and can be broken into a million pieces in the cold. And yet, it never really loses itself. It creates life and it maintains life. At first sight or taste, it seems plain and simple. And for this reason, we may often take it for granted but it is at the core of most everything we know and love. Because it has traveled our planet, our galaxy, and our universe, it is probably the most ancient thing we as humans will ever touch, taste, breathe, see, and feel. To me, 
it is proof that something doesn't need to be flashy for it to be beautiful. It creates life and it sustains life without judgment or prejudice. And when the time comes for us to take our last breath, it helps us return to the earth and continues its journey in the cycle of life. It is adaptable, it is essential, and it is, without a doubt, precious. I could go on and on, of course, and that's just a few of the reasons why today and every day I am so thankful for water. I'm really loving how my different layers are coming together and I have to say it's in great part because I am listening to my intuition. I'm going with the flow of what my intuition is calling me to do and in that sense I'm also giving reverence to all the qualities I admire so much in water. As I'm adding this iridescent magic green, I am looking at painting and I'm feeling like I could almost call it done, but at the same time I am feeling nudged to continue with the process and so I will do that. But I'd like to encourage you when you're painting to check in with yourself and to see what your intuition is calling you to do. And are you paying attention when your intuition says, maybe it's time for you to stop, or why don't you add this? These little nudges you get from your intuition, or that I get from my intuition, help us grow as individual artists, and so it's important to pay attention to them. And the more we pay attention to, to them, those little intuitive nudges, the easier it becomes to just go with the flow of the intuitive process. I often say that green is my favorite color and really with the amount of times I turn to blue in my paintings, <laughs> I think I could easily say also that blue is definitely right up there with green and it certainly is a much easier paint, uh, color to paint with. It's, it doesn't seem nearly as overwhelming and there's a very peaceful quality to this color. 
which I associate to water. Um, rightly or wrongly, water really is what it is next to. <laughs> the color of water, that is. Um, it never, it doesn't really have a color. It's more transparent than anything else. And yet, I feel drawn to using blue when I paint water. And it's probably, again, because the qualities of the color blue, to me, reflect the qualities I admire in water as well. The last thing I'm feeling called to do in my process is to add some little dots of white here and there in the painting, sort of to um, maybe mimic abstract bubbles as they form in water, when water rushes against something or water is boiling, or even when water is frozen, it can still have bubbles in it. And so I'm using some white gesso here and a dotting tool to just add those little bits of white to my painting and once this is done I'll, I'll be ready to pull the tape off my painting and move in for a closer look. Maybe an appropriate name for this painting being that it is representative of water could be the title More Than Meets the Eye. As I'm moving my painting around and it catches the light, it reminds me of another quality of water that I really love, and that's that it is also shimmery. For the most part, it seems transparent and doesn't seem to have much to it. And then when it catches the light and reflects it back to us, it lets us know just how special it really is. Every single element of this painting was very simple to create. And yet, when you add them all together, they create something really beautiful. Well, at least that's what I think. I hope this little painting process was just the thing you needed to feel inspired to create or that it was a very relaxing experience for you. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!